Hi everyone, this is Brilliant Botany episode 6 and today I'm going to be doing a how-to on how to make moss terrariums and hopefully teaching you a little bit about mosses in the process. Now to get started, here's what you need to make a moss terrarium. Potting soil, small rocks or gravel, you can use stuff from your yard which you rinse off or you can get it from a craft store, dried Spanish moss which I also got at a craft store, glass containers, water, and moss. Now I'm lucky enough to live somewhere where I'm surrounded by moss because I'm right on the wetlands. If you have the option, go outside, find some moss, collect it using something flat like a butter knife and ease underneath the moss and pull it off of the ground and collect as much as you need for your terrarium but try to take small pieces so that it can fill back in once you're done. If you don't have the option of going outside and collecting moss, there are some websites where you can order some and I'll put a link to one or two in the description. Alright, so you've got your supplies and now you're ready to make your moss terrarium. Step one. You want to take your glass container, whatever you've got, a jar, a votive holder, anything, and you're going to want to put a layer of rocks or gravel at the bottom. The point of this is so that any excess water drips to the bottom and doesn't soak the moss and sit on top of it. You just want to fill it in. And I'm going to add some blue. Okay, there you go. you got your layer of gravel and rocks at the bottom. Now, unlike most plants that you know, trees, flowers, anything like that, Bryophytes, mosses, are non-vascular. Basically, that means that mosses don't have xylem and phloem, the tubing inside of a plant that moves water around. They still have specialized tissues for absorbing water, but they can't move at long distances like trees can. All right, once you've got your layer of gravel, you're gonna wanna add a layer of dried Spanish moss. The reason we're doing this is we're gonna be putting potting soil on top of it, and the Spanish moss stops the soil from falling through into the rocks. Now, Spanish moss isn't actually a moss. It's actually in the bromeliad family, and one of the distinctions that you can tell right away that it's not a real moss is that it flowers. Mosses don't have flowers. So just take a thin layer of this guy and pop it on top of your rocks to add another layer. On top of our Spanish moss, we're going to put a thin layer of potting soil. Mosses don't actually need the soil. They can grow pretty much on anything. That's why you see them growing on bricks, trees, rocks, anything like that. But it adds a nice layer and if you want, you can contour your soil to make bumps and hills and those sorts of things inside your terrarium to add some interesting layers. Now we're ready to add the moss. And then you're just going to want to lay that on top. While I'm doing this, I am adding water to the bottom of the moss to make sure that it's well watered. And then I'm pushing it down just so the layers stick together a little bit more. All right, now you have your very own moss terrarium. If you're going to be keeping it inside, make sure it gets as much light as you can give it and make sure that it stays damp. Don't over soak it with water. You don't want it to get too wet but make sure that it stays moist. If you're keeping it in a sealed container, like a jar, you won't need to water it as often, but if you notice that condensation is building up on the inside, you can open it for an hour or two and that will help. So I told you that mosses don't produce flowers, but how do they reproduce? So mosses are bryophytes. Bryophytes includes all mosses, hornworts, and liverworts, and all of these reproduce through something called alternation of generations. Basically, they move back and forth between two stages, gametophytes and sporophytes. The stage that you'll recognize is gametophytes, which is what we just put in our little terrariums, but I'm going to explain to you how that whole cycle works. Every moss starts as a haploid spore. Haploid means that the spore only has one set of chromosomes. This then grows into a protonema and then into a mature gametophore, which is what the sex organs grow from. The archegonia and the antheridia, the female and the male parts. The female part produces an egg, and the male part a biflagellate sperm, meaning it has two flagellum so that it can swim. The sperm swim either through water or are carried by something like a springtail to the egg where fertilization happens. Once this happens, we get the diploid sporophyte that grows out of the gametophyte, and this is the second stage. Inside of this sporophyte, meiosis takes place, and this produces lots of haploid spores so that the cycle can start over. So that's how you make a terrarium, and there's a little bit about mosses and bryophytes. Now, if you make a terrarium using this tutorial, please send me a picture. You can leave a link in the comments or you can send it to me on Tumblr via an ask or a submission. If you like this video, press the thumbs up button and subscribe to keep up with my future videos. Next week, I'm going to be talking about different types of inflorescences, aka flowers. Also, I definitely got stung by a bee while filming this, not on camera, but I'm gonna go ice my foot now.